Talk Nick fans, that's right. I am Victor Hatchiba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, together with me, Gustavo Freitas from Jumper Brazil. We are receiving in this channel Jake Fisher, Jake Fisher from Bleacher Report. Welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel, man. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. That was a very, very kind introduction. Ex excited to be here. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Ah, great, great. First of all, Jake, do you can introduce yourself for Brazilians? Yeah, I'm Jake Fisher. Um, for the last two years, I've been the lead NBA reporter at Bleacher Report, uh, covering transaction stuff, trades, free agency, the NBA draft. Um, and before that, I was at Sports Illustrated for four or five years, writing mostly feature stories. Um, so that's kind of my, my basketball expertise. Um, and I, I, I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. Ah, great. First question, Gustavo Freitas uh, will be for you. Uh, so, Brooklyn, right? Yes. <laughs> It's good because <laughs> teams are uh, teams in, in free agency are got they, they, they're stuck right now for almost a month or so waiting for Kevin Durant and uh, Kyrie Irving uh, situations. By the fact that most of good players uh, have already signed with a team, what do you think uh, might happen with them before? the season starts. So I keep hearing that two things are going to need to happen in order for Kevin Durant to be traded. A team is going to have to meet the Nets really, really, really high asking price, which is very high for multiple reasons. It's very high because Rudy Gobert got traded for five first round picks and a host of other players to, to Minnesota. Kevin Durant, is better than Rudy Gobert. He, I was talking to someone last night, just catching up with a friend um, in a Western Conference front office, and the guy said that Kevin Durant, if he's traded, will be the best player in NBA history to be traded. And the Nets are, are, are pricing him as such. So unless Boston or Toronto or another team comes out and, and really makes the richest package ever, the richest offer ever for a player – the Nets are not going to trade him unless the other factor could be if Kevin Durant makes a stink and decides that he's going to hold out, he's going to really try to force a trade. But there isn't much expectation that he's going to do that. That is not really something that people who know Kevin Durant, people who have worked with Kevin Durant, really expect him to do. So if that's the case, then all signs really are pointing to Kevin Durant and then, in turn, Kyrie Irving being back back in Brooklyn by the start of training camp. That's where things stand right now. Ah, okay. And, Jake, let's talk about Nick's rumors, okay? Uh, I want your opinion. Uh, what do you think about uh, the Donovan Mitchell rumors uh, from the Knicks? So, Donovan Mitchell is a similar... Uh, trade situation to Kevin Durant being that he is on the same team that Rudy Gobert was traded from, and they believe Donovan Mitchell to be better than Rudy Gobert as well. So their price is higher than that price. The Knicks are a perfect trade partner, being that they have more draft picks to trade than any team really in the league. There's a couple teams that have similar war chests from Oklahoma City, who gave the Knicks three picks on draft night to New Orleans, et cetera. But of the teams that are actually in on Donovan Mitchell, the teams that have checked in that from I've, what I've heard have been Washington, uh, Charlotte, Toronto, Miami, and New York. Miami's kind of the, the only team along with Toronto that's really in on both Donovan and Kevin Durant. Um, but – no, none of those teams can match the Knicks' overall draft asset pool. And 
the Jazz, unlike Brooklyn, that you know the Nets want to try to get back players and pieces that can help them compete now. The Jazz are more focused by all accounts on on young players and draft picks. So really, all of a sudden, the fact that New York now has three extra picks to, to play with here, um, they, they really are at the front of the line to get Donovan Mitchell. But Utah is not going to trade him unless – any team meets their exorbitant asking price. So it's kind of, that's why we're at a standstill here. People are, you know, it's a staring contest and people are waiting to see whose bluff is going to get called. But man, I, I hope see in soon the new movie from Spider-Man, Spider-Man 4. <laughs> okay. My, uh, the new Miles Morales <laughs> coming to the Knicks. Spider-Man 4. <laughs> ah, man. I believe. I still still believe. But when... Uh, let me ask you this. How did, how did you become a Knicks fan? Man, I am a Knicks fan since 92. 92. Oh, in, in this channel, bro. Oh, I bring yeah. Chris, Chris Harry. Harry. I make it interview in this channel. Yeah. Uh, oh. Forever the Knicks in 90s, man. I am in love with Patrick Ewing, John Starks, nah? uh, Charles Oakley, Anthony Mason, etc. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Nah, nah, my passion, man. My passion. This channel, this channel is my passion. I love New York Knicks, bro. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Man. I can feel it through the camera. I can feel it through the camera. Oh, man, I, I love so much. The, the New York Knicks in Brazil, it's complicated, bro. It's complicated because in Brazil, uh, we love soccer. And the Knicks uh, don't have a great team. Uh. In Brazil, Golden time. State Warriors, Brooklyn, Net, Brooklyn Nets in Brazil. <laughs> it's complicated. But, man, I believe. I believe in great future. Make Knicks great again, I believe. <laughs> have you been to, have you been to Madison Square Garden? Uh, uh, I will make a trip uh, this channel. We, uh, I don't yet, but this channel uh, we uh, uh, will make a trip nah, from New York next year. Okay. Uh, more, more 20 Brazilians, 20 Brazilians with me. Amazing. Nah, I hope meet you in New York. Love, yeah, let me know. Let me know when you're coming. I will. I will absolutely be there. Ah, okay, that's great, man. That's great. <laughs> uh, uh, Jake, uh, you you said uh, something about the Utah Jazz and the price. Uh, did you think? Do, do you think that the the Jazz set the bar with that the Rudy Gobert trade with a bunch of picks? Or do you think that was just overpaid and teams are going to, you know, calm down a little bit? The price will come down eventually. This The, the market always kind of goes up and down. For a while, you know, no teams were trading unprotected first-round picks. But this year we saw, you know, a couple go to yeah. Utah, a couple go to um, Atlanta, or a couple go to San Antonio. Um in the DeJounte Murray trade, there will be unprotected picks if Kevin Durant and Donna Mitchell are moved as well. So, you know, the market goes off of recent precedent and it will be impacted moving forward. But there will be a time where no unprotected picks are trade. You know, the next time a superstar is on the board and the best offer for him doesn't include unprotected picks and a team takes protected picks for that guy, And the next time a superstar is on the block after that incident, then no team is going to be willing to offer unprotected picks. So it does kind of – the market is very reflected on a what have you done for me lately type of situation. Ah, great. Uh, Jake, I want your opinion from the Knicks uh, about Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Hartenstein. Uh, what do you think about these guys nah, uh, coming to the Knicks? Mm -hmm. I'll start with Isaiah Hartenstein first because he's he's a lot simpler to talk about. Um, 
you know, I think he's really became, you know, he didn't get a lot of attention last year because the Clippers weren't very good. Um, but he really became, in my opinion, one of the better backup centers in the entire NBA last year. He's a really, really, really good passer. He's a strong defender. He can, he can provide a presence at the rim. Um, I think he's going to be a very big addition to New York, especially being that Mitchell Robinson's obviously had some injury history of his own, so he'll be able to be a spot starter when needed. Um, in terms of Jalen Brunson, it's a lot of money, but money that I think he will be worth. He is a very, very, very talented player. As we saw in the playoff series against Utah while Luka Doncic was injured, and we've seen him flourish next to Luka Doncic as well. So Jalen will ideally be able to raise the floor of the entire team. They have been in, in real dire need of a legitimate table-setting point guard throughout all of Tom Thibodeau's tenure there. The Kemba Walker experiment obviously did not work out. Julius Randle has taken a step forward in terms of <laughs> his production <laughs> while being a guy with the ball in his hands, but he's going to have to adapt to Jalen Brunson hold, handling it a lot more. Um, and I, I do think he's one of the better one-on-one -on -one players, you know, in, in tight spaces that the NBA really does have. He's got this weird herky-jerky head fake pivot type game that, not a lot of players have anymore, and it's hard to guard. It's hard to stay in front of. The question now with him, though, will be, can New York get a Donovan Mitchell? Can they get somebody else to be the number one next to Jalen Brunson like Luka Doncic was in Dallas? The Knicks definitely believe Jalen will be someone who people will want to come play with, and that's a big gamble that they're not going to you know, run out the clock. Like it's not going to be too long before Jalen Brunson becomes you know, in the back half of his career, but they're hoping he can be, you know, the Kyle Lowry to Kawhi Leonard in Toronto or the Drew Holiday to Giannis Antetokounmpo in Milwaukee. That's definitely the type of player that they've invested in him to be. And they believe he can be. And Jake, uh, I heard now uh, in New York post, I talked now with uh, Zach Brazilier about the post in New York Post. <laughs> Derek Harper promise. Knicks fans will love Jalen Brunson. Promise, nah. We'll love Jalen Brunson. I hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Derek Harper, bro. <laughs> and Gustavo, yeah. next question. Uh, I just have one thing about that. Uh, Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brunson on defense. I don't think that is, that's a good idea at all. A great but, question. Yeah, it's a great – no, it's a point that a lot of people in the NBA have made, definitely. Yeah. My last question, uh, it's let's go to the West. What do you think about uh, Russell Westbrook and the Lakers? Uh, is there any chance that the team will get him traded or is Westbrook there for good? There's definitely a chance, but they're going to need to put two first round picks on the board right now. That's, that's what the market is saying. Um, so until they do, which they have not been willing to of late um, until they do, I think he will be a member of the Los Angeles Lakers. That, that is where things are headed. All right. <laughs> yeah. Jake, uh, I want your opinion about this player aqui, ó. This player. <laughs> RJ Barrett. Okay. I want, I want your opinion. Okay. Uh, Jake, uh, do you believe uh, RJ Barrett can be a future or all star or not, in your opinion? I think he could be a fringe all-star, someone who's, you know, in there a couple of times, someone who scores 20-plus a game, second, third best player on a team type of guy. Um, I think that's certainly possible. I think he could play a role sort of similar to what Andrew Wiggins did for Golden State this year in the finals. Um, he's really come a long way. He's got he's got room to – I mean, he has work to do in order to get to this level we're talking at. Let, let's, let's be clear. Um, but 
I was pretty down on him in terms of my thoughts on his abilities um, coming out of Duke. And he's progressed and gotten a lot better than I really thought he would. He's he's better than I was expecting at this point of his career. So I, I'm I'm not doubting RJ Barrett anymore. Ah, okay. That's and uh, I am curious about Derrick Rose. In your opinion, Jake, uh, Derrick Rose, stay or leave the Knicks? Well, at certain points last year, while he was healthy, Derrick Rose was arguably the Knicks' best player. Um, and he was someone that Knicks personnel were saying was their best player. He's obviously been a favorite of Tom Thibodeau. The one thing about Derrick, though, is that He's got only one guaranteed year left on his contract. Next year is a team option. And I believe that is the salary that Utah would be more interested in receiving in terms of a veteran salary, not Evan Fournier, in order to make the numbers work between Donovan's high, high, high salary and the lower level numbers of the rookies, the young guys, McBride, Grimes, Toppin, et cetera. So, um, I don't know if he'll be on the team next year, but I, of course New York would hope he's there. And uh, the last question, Jake. The last question. Uh, do you know about uh, new rumor? I I, I, I want to hear. Do you, do you know about new rumor? Uh, you can we can tell for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, but I'll say. Carmelo is still out there, right? And there's only a few teams I think Carmelo Anthony would actually really want to play for at the stage of his career. I'll say that. I'll say that. <laughs> Maybe three. Uh, Maybe three teams. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, the Knicks fans will love, will love uh, Carmelo Anthony, né? Uh, in York Knicks, bro. Oh, the marketing uh marketing from this team uh nicks uh so passionate uh, uh about carmelo anthony in brazil man in brazil uh nick fans love love carmelo anthony né? so do you you know né? uh long time <laughs> nicks <laughs> uh, the last great team with carmelo anthony né? the, the yeah. last great player it's yeah. complicated But I believe, I, I, I said in the beginning this interview, I believe in this team, go. I believe. <laughs> There you go, man. Well, thank you guys for having me. This was so much fun. Thank you, Jake. Uh, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you for your time. Brazil loves you your job, bro. Okay? Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Take care, Take guys. Care. E aí, pessoal? Este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Unifans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Unifans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos e também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não, para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick